Cubs. Your Cowboys will be practicing tomorrow as off-season training activities continue. OTAs, as the boys and girls like to call them. I'm going to be the jerk. Organized training. Oh, sure. organized. Yeah, that's this the thing. This is how much we don't care. It, this, I mean, it's the same thing. It is. It's just OTAs. It's just, it's just OTAs. Mm -hmm. Practice in shorts and jerseys. That's right. Uh, that continues tomorrow. And it better be low speed or else you're getting a fine. <laughs> All right. Mike McCord said, hey, don't y'all touch each other. Okay? Sound like he a, uh, a chaperone at a middle school dance. Hey, 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 hey. Leave room for Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Le <laughs> leave room for Jesus. You know what makes me think of? What? Every time I think about that, Kevin Harlot. Uh, Kevin Harlot. Kevin. Wow, what did you just call Kevin? Kevin Hart. I had Kevin Harlan and Kevin Hart put together. It is 703. Yep, and that's, wow. what, that's what came out. Um, but Kevin Hart, when he talks about his kids, hey, don't you be playing in that toilet. That's right. Don't you be in that toilet. Yep. That's what I think of when I think about OTAs and uh, these players keeping their hands off each other. Uh, but one pressing question for every new offensive play caller in 2023. Oh, just, just the new play, play callers? Yeah, just the new ones. I mean, what does that have to do with the Cowboys? Oh, I don't know if you heard, but they got a new play caller in 2023. Oh, really? Yeah. Who's that? Big Mike. <laughs> Big Mike McCarthy. I just like send you up to do that. Uh -huh. One more time for me. Uh, Big Mike. Thank you. A little, a little less gusto, but that's fine. I'm, I still like it. Well, his boy, uh, Brian Schottenheimer, is, is the offensive, offensive coordinator. Uh, this piece was written by, would you like to guess who this piece was written by in The Athletic? In The Athletic? Mm-hmm. John Mashoda. Nope. Oh. Shale Kapadian? No, he works with the Ringer now. I don't know. Who is it? Uh, that would be one Mike Jones. Who? <laughs> I'm not going to say that. I again. appreciate the setup. Thank uh -huh, you. Uh -huh, this, is, this is the type of energy we're on today. Oh, yeah. This, this is, we're going to be on this all night long. So sit back and relax and enjoy it here uh, on the get right. Uh, one pressing question for every new offensive play caller in 2023. Would you like to start with your Cowboys or would you like to start somewhere else? No, let's start with the Cowboys. Okay. This is the home of the Cowboys. I think that. This is one of the big questions that locally people have had is what kind of impact can Mike McCarthy taking over for Kellen Moore have, particularly as I mean, it's always going to be the conversation with any team and particularly with America's team, the quarterback with Dak Prescott, with, you know, the polarizing nature of his position and his play last season. You know, what is his impact going to be? Um, and so the, the question that surrounds you know that that uh, leadership and that relationship between quarterback and Mike McCarthy as offensive play caller is going to be a highly scrutinized one. I feel the question for Big Mike going into the 2023 NFL season as the offensive play caller for your Dallas Cowboys: Can Mike McCarthy lead a more effective offense and help Dak Prescott get his groove what? back? Oh, I like the Stella getting your groove back. Thing. Uh -huh, but I, uh -huh. I really called the whole question, didn't I? You did. That's you crazy. Did. It's almost like I'm constantly inundated with Cowboys content. Hmm, I wonder why. Uh, let's go with his write-up here. McCarthy knew threw Kellen Moore under the bus he after sure the did. Cowboys <laughs> fired the former offensive coordinator, saying that Moore's uh, obsession with scoring points was why the Cowboys lacked balance and why their defense was never rested. Why would he want to score points? I mean, he I heard, you know, you have to score points to win games in the National Football League. Overrated. Uh, apparently for Big Mike it was, at least for Kellen Moore. The head coach vowed to run an offense that relies heavily on a physical ground game, saying that would help cut down on Dak Prescott's career-high career 15 interceptions. McCarthy also said he'll run a more simplistic offense – which he believes will make life easier for Prescott and his teammates. Finally, a lot of big talk, but is it just that? Let's not forget McCarthy's offense is late in his tenure in Green Bay, were criticized by Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. and others for being stale huh. and unimaginative. Wonder where we've heard that recently. Um, yeah, that that's an interesting point. I'm glad that, that was brought up by Mr. Jones in this write-up. I was very pleased, and I guess somebody earlier said that their nice thing about me is that I'm a human word calendar, learn a new word every day. Let's see if this is one of those. I was very pleased by the diction that uh, Mike Jones used here, using the word effective and not efficient, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. that has been the thing that people have leaned on when it comes to Kellen Moore, and rightfully so. Like It's not like they have been wrong in saying that the Cowboys' offenses under Kellen Moore have been highly efficient. It's one of the reasons why all the stats nerds, and I say that uh, lovingly, all the stats nerds have pointed to the idea that, hey, man, y'all are being really hard on Kellen Moore. This team has put up points. This team has picked up yards. Like, the offense has been statistically Very productive, right? yes. But I think the word effective gets to things beyond efficient. And it felt like in inopportune moments, 
inopportune times, this offense fell a little flat, was not doing, was not carrying the burden that you anticipated based on the production that they did, you know, would do in other situations. And so the idea is, will what Mike McCarthy's putting together ultimately produce better results? Because I think that's really what everybody's concerned about. It's the reason why anytime people bring up the Cowboys around here, they go, yeah, but they ain't been to the Super Bowl in umpteen years, right? The end result ends up being a big, uh, you know, issue for folks around here. How confident do you feel like Mike McCarthy has the appropriate answer to that question of can he lead a more effective offense? Because in theory, we go West Coast offense should help get the ball out quicker, help, you know, make some of the decisions a little bit easier in those things. We've seen the way that Mike McCarthy went to Dak Prescott and asked him, what are the things that you're uncomfortable with this play sheet? And we can, so we can throw those out and just do the things that make you the most successful. Like, how confident are you that the answer is with Mike McCarthy? Uh, well, we're going to find out because one thing that Mike McCarthy is going to have to do for this quarterback is to ensure that what he is seeing on the field is what he's confidently able to throw when it comes to the windows that he's throwing to and the receivers being on the same page with him to ensure communication is not breaking down the way that we've seen it happen mm -hmm. from time to time with Prescott and his receivers. If they can continue to clean that up, have what they like to call play purpose where everyone knows exactly what needs to be done on a particular play and everyone be on the same page for that to happen then i think you can see some improvement there in, there in terms of that communication and consistency for mike mccarthy in this offense because one thing that i all that always bothered me about kellen moore and his tenure here was that for me there was never a definition of what he determined what was his philosophy offensively what was he to his core when it came to his beliefs on offense? We never really got a good answer to any of that. Was he a terrific play caller at times? Could he call games that allowed you to see rhythm and consistency within the offense? Sure. But we never found out what was his bread and butter to be able to fall back on when things weren't working. And that to me is something that I would love to see for this offense as well. What are you going to define for me as the ability to fall back on when things don't go right? And are you going to stick to that and be true to it based on what you have in terms of your quarterback, your receivers, Tony Pollard being featured as the number one back? I want to see all those questions be answered. And Mike McCarthy and his boy, Brian Schottenheimer, are going to have an opportunity to do that this year. I think you laid it out perfectly there. I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously, it's the question for a reason. It's the thing that we're most intrigued to see. Um, I'm also intrigued to have a season in which we can accurately point to what exactly Mike McCarthy does, right? Like having a thing that's tangible to grade him on mm -hmm. will be very nice. I don't know if that's necessarily like the biggest sticking point, but for me, I know that's something I'm excited to be able to have so that we don't have to do this thing where we're like, nebulously, it seems like things are going well under his watch. I'd like to have something to score him on. Because I thought at this point, McCarthy would be at to the point of his career where he wanted to be the CEO being able to oversee the things happening within his offense and the defense and not have to get down into the weeds in terms of game planning and installing that as the weeks and weeks go on for this offense. Now he is back in that and going to be installing and calling this offense week in and week out. What kind of effect will that have on him in terms of his own game management, his ability to go through situational football and be able to ensure that his team is in the best positions to succeed for the totality of this football team, not just on the offensive side uh, of the football. So he's got a lot on his plate that he's going to be taking on, and we'll see how Dak Prescott responds to that this upcoming season. The one question for each of these new offensive play callers going into the 2023 NFL season as detailed by The Athletic, uh, is there another team that you would be interested in? I'd be lying if I did not bring up a team that's in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. What's Todd Monken got? I'm interested in what the question is for him. Yeah, Todd Monken taking over as the OC for the Baltimore Ravens. The question for him is, can Monken help Lamar Jackson regain his MVP form and reach another level as a passer? Jones writes, fresh off his massive contract extension, Jackson wants to contend for the Super Bowl and MVP the league's top dual threat quarterback hasn't passed for, for 3,000 yards since 2019 when he was the second unanimous MVP in league history. Of course, Tom Brady did it back in 2010. Jackson that year had 36 touchdown passes to just six interceptions in 2019, playing in 15 games. His touchdown totals dropped to 26 in 2020, 16 in 2021, and 17 in 2022, where he played 12 games in both 2021 and 2022.
Yeah, I'm, I, I'm wildly interested. I always bring up the fact that Monken was the offensive coordinator uh, during some of the tenure in the Buccaneers with uh, Jameis Winston, where they were airing that thing out. Like the idea of a more pro style offense. Um, and I say that trying to avoid all of the kind of undercurrents that come with it. But uh, Lamar Jackson has run pro style offenses incredibly well. The idea that he's like some level of gimmick quarterback, I think, is out of place. That's more just what Greg Roman tends to do. So I'm interested in simply the idea of if you give him the opportunity to show you his talent, if that is enough. In addition to the idea that, hey, they got him some people on the other end that can actually catch the football. Um, Hello, so, Odell Beckham Jr. So hopefully that helps make all of that go right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by that as well because... This is going to be something that people are going to ring up on Lamar Jackson if it doesn't go well. And I understand why that would be the case. Uh, is there someone else as a new play caller that ca catches your attention, KG? Uh, I'm going to go with Sean Payton uh, in Denver because the question that the Denver Broncos, I'm sure, was first on their list to Sean Payton when interviewing him as a head coach, potentially head coach for that team. Mm -hmm. Hey, what are you going to do about Russell Wilson? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that's, that's such a difficult question. Yes, because what what is there to do if he's done? Of course, I use the word if. Like, there's a possibility <laughs> that that is not the case, and like the combined neglect and you know change of scenery for him made it to be difficult for him to come back. Now that I feel like that's some of that is a stretch because we saw him just be bad. But I, you know, maybe Sean Payton and his you know wealth of knowledge when it comes to being an offensive play caller, particularly in this NFL. Um, if that will help, um, you know, kind of reinvigorate him, especially also his experience with a shorter quarterback and those types of things like th those provide different challenges than your typical six, four quarterback that you'll run out there or whatever. So, um, I'm intrigued by that, but yeah, I wonder what there's to do. If you look up and you go, Oh, Russell Wilson is just, he's, he's reached his date where this is beyond what it, you know, what it was at a certain point and you cannot do much about it. It's amazing that this deep into his career, that Russell Wilson was sacked a career high 55 times last year. Is it amazing? Because it's always been an issue for him. My, my point is, at this point, you shouldn't be taking that many sacks. I understand at times there's going to be breakdowns of the offensive line and that kind of thing. This is who he is. But you got to throw away the foot. You got to do something. This is what he does, right? <laughs> like there's a there's a severe supreme, I should say, his confidence in himself and his ability to make plays. But the problem is, he is 30. What now? Because I know he's in his 30s. Like, what, what is the particular age that we're looking at here? Yeah, 34. I was going to say 33, and I was giving him a year. He's 34 <laughs> now, right? Like, the idea that just because I'm six foot, like, I'm shorter than everybody else, I'm going to be faster than everybody. Oh, no, 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 my, my boy. Like, you are a little bit older. And so the idea that, and I understand being shorter, you need to move and be able to, you know, move the pocket, see, create different sight lines. But the idea that I'm just going to hold on this football and make something happen, no, you have to change that mindset. And that's another thing Sean Payton has had to deal with. You know, Drew Brees got to a point where, like, this is not going to be wildly mobile, you know? And so I wonder if some of that is just having the gravitas to be able to talk to that man from a place of experience and to a place where he'll listen to you when you tell him, hey, man, it's not what you think it is mm -hmm. because you holding on to the football is just going to create sacks and turnovers. And if you trust me because I have the bona fides, we can take this to a place, we can alter the game to a place where – you are doing things that are successful, even if it's not exactly the way that you want to do it. Because it does seem like that's something that Russell Wilson was dealing with, with the whole let Russ cook and the power struggle dynamic that happened in Seattle is I want to do it my way. But at some point, it might need to be a conversation of what's the way that gives us the best opportunity to succeed. They're going to need a good run game out there to help him out, too, uh, in Denver. That should be able to help him a little bit as well. I'll touch on this one real quick because mm -hmm. I saw that on the, from the 817. Uh, for the Washington Commanders, Eric Bieniemy ah. taking over as the OC in Washington, the question for him is, is Biennemi as gifted an offensive mind, teacher, and leader as the Chiefs said he was? Mm -hmm. And How he, much of that will we be able to tell simply by looking at like the results of that offense? Understanding what that Washington Commandos offense has been for the last only God knows how long. I'm not sure because the big question is who is going to be the quarterback there. And even Sam Howell, like they've been pretty on that, on that uh but how, yeah, and how long do they stick with him though? Sounds like Sam Howell for right now is going to be that guy. But you do have some weapons there in Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis yeah, Samuel. That's a good point. You know, good running backs, you know, with Brian Robinson there. So you've got some pieces to work with, but again. The enemy knows better than anybody. The quarterback drives all of this. And I don't care how fancy of a play caller you are, how gifted you are as an offensive mind. 
if you don't have someone back there who you can confidently believe in to throw the football and make it happen for you, it doesn't matter what kind of offense you're going to be running out there. What happens at quarterback for them is going to tell us a lot about it. Eric Bieniemy's ability to elevate that offense with the pieces that he has in Washington. Yeah.